Uh, question number 11 to the Housing Cabinet Member, please. Thank you, Councillor White. Um, as you can see in the, in the written answer, it's um, wrong that we haven't applied for this funding for the um, London Living Rent Grant. It's considered an intermediate product in the same way that our shared ownership grant is, and we have applied for that, so you can't actually apply for both of them. Um, and we do support um, the council-led development programme. We've had discussions with the GLA about applying for affordable homes grants, um, and also we support London Living Rent grants in other, in other schemes. So it's incorrect to say that we haven't applied for all the grant available to us. So can you, can you clarify that? Uh, you say that you've taken grant for the shared uh, ownership. Uh, what uh, grant did you take? Uh, and couldn't we have used this uh, London Living uh, Grant to actually build more uh, affordable homes uh, within this program so we could have had actually two tranches of grant for intermediate products. Councillor Stanley, before you answer, may I ask you to talk into your mic? Thank you. Oh, sorry. Is it... Sorry, it's, it's bending a lot. Right. <laughs> Hopefully people can hear me. Um, if I take that in, in sort of two portions, the in the scheme that you're referring to, the, there's an affordable portion and there is a market rented portion. If we were to apply for additional affordable, we would have to reduce the number of market, which would make the scheme economically non-viable. In terms of applying for a London Living Rent Grant versus a Shared Ownership Grant, for us to be able to make use of a London Living Rent Grant, we would have to have an arm's length um, body that was capable of letting accommodation at an intermediate level versus what we have at the moment which is a social housing body so it wouldn't be possible to use that grant we have supported um, developments like Battersea Vista where they do London living they've applied for London living rent grant and used it there but through our own for our own stock we apply for the shared ownership grant at a different level second supplementary Gosh, Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, does the Cabinet Member share my concern that Labour is rather missing the point about the schemes that are available right now and which they could be supporting us on? Rather than grasping at schemes that might be possible in the future, they could instead vote with us at Committee and at Council to deliver a thousand, a thousand affordable homes or at Planning Committee when they recently voted against schemes which would have delivered 35% and 37% affordable homes over 600 homes in the borough. Does she agree that it would be better if Labour, instead of pushing for things that might or might not happen, they just decided to support us here and now? Thank you for your supplemental. Um, yes, I, I would agree with that. I, I think that pushing for pushing for sort of things like London living rent when we're already delivering affordable which offers people shared ownership a chance to be on the home owning ladder to sort of scoff at that and and ask us to consider applying for grants that we can't use because we don't have a, our own rental agency to me is, is very short-sighted and it's a shame that they can't just get behind us on the program that we have which is at least a thousand to delivery with 60 percent of them being affordable thank you question uh, 12 councillor hampton yeah, question 12 for the Cabinet Member. I thank the Councillor for her question. As, as the Leader has already alluded to, it was quite an extraordinary meeting. The Opposition seemed to want to get it over and done with as soon as possible and asked uh, very few questions indeed. I don't know whether that was because of their embarrassment over trying to do a U-turn on their housing policy or some other reason. Uh, what I would add is at least four years ago, uh, Councillor Osborne did co-op the Council Tax Commission. At least some effort was put in four years ago. I hope the same will be put in this time round. Councillor Hampton. Uh, actually, um, Councillor Senior says that I came up with and says suggest in his written response, or, in, or is, it says suggest in the written response. I didn't suggest a council commission, I actually set one up. It did report just over four years ago. It's quaint that the councillors from the other side of the chamber are still harping back to then. It was of its time. Something much more sophisticated is in the offing this time round, and uh, they just have to wait until they see it. Uh, supplemental, well, that's quite an interesting one. Um, at that same meeting, um, the members opposite who were on that committee uh, confirmed that literature that the Labour Party had sent question. out, it is a question, I'm just leading up to it, um, 
was to freeze the council tax. So could I ask the cabinet member to ask them where the detailed proposals of this budget are? Well, I, I, Mr. Mayor, I do look forward to seeing this uh, 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 very sophisticated document that uh, Councillor Osborne has referred to. And just to be clear, if, if, I, uh, if I got it wrong in my previous answer, yes, so there was a commission that Councillor Osborne set up and we did uh, review the report. And I look forward to its uh, replacement in due course. It was interesting when we did ask the Labour group at that meeting what this pledge meant and was it a pledge for four years or for one year. Uh, we didn't get any answers. I wonder whether they have any answers at all. Second supplementary. Yeah, indeed, Councillor. <laughs> um, yeah, you, you've got to admit, uh, Councillor Hampton is a trier. Um, they, they keep on asking for our manifesto, but uh, when we, it will come in the fullness of time. Uh, you've got the message about the same low council tax same from as us. Same Councillor Hampton question. Um, um, I, I, I note in the paper it says that the option has been considered further budget reductions, the use of balances or additional council tax. Perhaps uh, Councillor Senior, in the interest of precision in his answer, can answer which of those options he's likely to be using. I thank the Councillor for his, uh, his, his question and I can tell him he'll find out in about two weeks' time. <laughs> Question uh, 13 to the uh, Cabinet Member for Housing. Thank you for your question. Um, the recladding for Sudbury, as you'll be aware from the recent Housing Committee, the works have increased as significantly since they were first procured. It's to do with the speed at which we have to strip the cladding, but also the market forces have pushed up the price for this quite specialist service um, that we're procuring. Um, the work, uh, why we haven't considered managing the contract directly, our own operational services are actually the lead contractor um, and we are hiring in some specialist contractors because it is quite a specialised job, particularly Sudbury where there's scaffolding and, and various things that need to be done and it wouldn't necessarily be appropriate for us to do absolutely everything ourselves. Supplementary question? Right. Uh, I noticed in the written answer uh, you pay tribute to the housing officers of uh, Wandsworth Council and I'd like to concur with you on that. Uh, they have been particularly hard working, um, especially in, in light of the Grenfell uh, situation where they lent their hand to uh, the failing uh, Kensington and Chelsea borough. Um, so, however, I'd just like to uh, uh, think where, um, with better political leadership, maybe they'd uh, work even better. Um, it's good to see the opposition's advice has been taken, but doesn't the Cabinet member see that more confidence from this administration is in its council officers and workers would lead to more savings and reduce the excess profit that some have seen the uh, Grenfell uh, disaster to offer? And also, given the market uh, conditions you mentioned, wouldn't it have been better to go for uh, a big bid on a big, big basis rather than a fixed price. Um, thank you for those many questions. I'm not quite sure which of your advice you're suggesting that we've accepted. Um, with regard to bringing everything in-house to strip out profit, I, I don't, it's a very specialised work and I, d I don't personally and don't see the point in us taking a, what are you suggesting, we would take over contracting firms to do this short term piece of work. I don't actually think it would save us any money. And it's a very, speci it's, it's a very specialist. Can I? Uh, I don't Can think I give you've a, actually been, I've been asked the question. You haven't been named personal explanation. I've been asked, asked the question. The question. No, I didn't ask if, 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 if a comment is made about you, mention. yes, no comments be made about you, not now. <laughs> <laughs> Councillor. I've forgotten what I was saying. Um, it's, it's, to me, I, I think you're sort of slightly missing the point. It's, it's not possible to bring absolutely every single service, and it's, it's not feasible or desirable to bring it all in-house. Um, and I doubt it would have saved us any, any money. So. Councillor. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Um, I wonder if the Cabinet member say actually that question could be answered slightly more simple, which is that we are in a situation unprecedented, that there is a demand here that simply wasn't there before. The private sector has the public sector over a barrel, and when the private sector has the public sector over a barrel, prices change. The interesting thing is not the 9 million, it's the 5.5 million, and why the Council ever thought uh, that, you know, as far as I'm aware, Sudbury House hasn't been moved since the second uh, uh, estimate came in. Uh, it, it's in the same 
same place and the issues are very much the same. What I would ask the questions of the Cabinet member, though, which is very serious, mm. is that what confidence does she have that what we've just seen happening with the cladding is not about to happen with the sprinklers? Uh, the sprinkler industry is in exactly the same position. It has an enormous windfall coming from, in my view, uh, ill-judged and hasty response by the public sector. Once again, the private sector will have the public sector over a barrel with this. What confidence can she give to our leaseholders that they won't be facing bills of seven or 8,000 rather than the three or 4,000 that they already are so scared of having to face? Thank you for your question, Councillor Grimston. Um, I think the sprinklers are a very different issue. With the cladding, we need to get it down as fast as possible. We need to take it off and replace it simultaneously. So there is an issue of, of speed there that won't necessarily be the same with the sprinklers. It's a much longer term program. Um, and the various councils will be doing it at a different rate. So I'm, I'm hopeful that they won't face those, those same issues that we've seen with cladding. Question, uh, question 14 to the Cabinet member. Um, I thank you, Councillor Gray, for your question, and it will surprise no one that I disagree completely with Mr. Corbyn. Um, our regeneration schemes have always been um, very inclusive. It's at the heart of, of what we try to do. Um, mixed ten years of housing, but also including the local community in the decision-making process, um, involving organisations like WorkMatch to um, get families and, and um, youngsters into jobs in the area. Uh, and we also look at leisure and, and amenity with it, within it as well. Supplementary question. Um, Lambeth's Labour Party members have approved a policy of no regeneration without the support to a referendum, I think it is, of affected council tenants um, or residents. And this is backed by Jeremy Corbyn and Sadiq Khan. Were this to be applied in Wandsworth, does the Cabinet member think it would be fair to other residents, those who are on the council's housing waiting list or those wanting to buy or rent at affordable prices? Um, thank you for the supplementary. Um, no, I, I, I don't think that referenda are the way forward. Um, I, th I think the problem is it's a, it's a very... <laughs> <laughs> it's a... It's a Mr. <laughs> let us yeah. speak. Um, I, I think the, the, the difficulty with any regeneration scheme is that there's, it's not just the stakeholders that live in the area. It, there's also various stakeholders surrounding it, people, as you quite rightly point out, from our waiting lists. Um, and there'll be various interests. So often it's, it's it will be better served to consider the, all of the community and try and get as many people involved as possible without this sort of... Um, yes, no ballot, which I think can sometimes be a bit of a blunt instrument. Second supplementary. Um, thank you for your question. To deal with the community aspect, it is still being progressed by public health, and I know a recent Roehampton partnership, we had a presentation on sort of the first stage of, of that, um, and hopefully we'll hear more, more again in the future. More consultation, yeah. <laughs> and um, to take the first part of the question, in terms of the 50% affordable, we will all, we'll always push for the maximum affordable that we can within the economics of any scheme, and we'll continue to do that as the scheme progresses. Question 16, Councillor, or I beg your pardon, question 15, Councillor Carpenter. Question 15 to the uh, Cabinet Member. Um, thank you, Councillor Carpenter. I'll refer you to the table it printed. Thank you, supplementary. Um, you haven't actually added them up, which is what I asked for in the question, but I have. Uh, there is a legal requirement for all councils to provide best value in all their financial transactions. Do you think that uh, getting 45% of market value for your housing sales is best value? Um, thank you for the supplementary. I, I think in terms of right to buy, it's, it's clear that a lot of our tenants and housing association tenants have the aspiration to own their own home. It's, o it's over 50%. And that a scheme in London where property values are so high, 
must, by definition, have quite a large discount in order to allow them to realise that goal. And I, I think, for me, value is a holistic thing, which encompasses people's wants and needs as much as it does the economics of anything. So, yes, I would think it is. Councillor Carpenter, if you wish. Any supplementaries? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, as the answer to the question uh, sets out, the ones of new homes bonus is the second highest in the country. It's a substantial sum of money, and that means that we can actually share the benefits to development, uh, not just uh, with those who are moving in to the development, but with all the people of the borough who will see some real benefits along with uh, SIL and neighbourhood SIL uh, coming from developments. Because we have delivered very large amounts of housing in the, in the borough, and it's not just housing for, for market sale. Very substantial numbers uh, of social housing of all different sorts, by like proper negotiation with developers, actually delivering results on the ground. That's why, for example, we've delivered three times as many uh, affordable ha homes in Nine Elms than Labour Lambeth, and have consented six times uh, that number than Labour Lambeth has done. This Council's approach just works. Supplementary. Um, that's a very robust answer, but um, would he agree that Wandsworth can be seen by many as setting the bar higher and thus achieving an enviable record on delivery and the vision on re Well, of course, uh, one of the biggest schemes, Mr. Mayor, that we, we are achieving is that of the Council's own scheme, designed to achieve 1,000 new homes, which 60% will be affordable, greater than any mayoral criteria. And what do the Labour Party do? Well, they go in a way and oppose it. They've now come and sort of crabbed their way back to kind of supporting it. Because we actually deliver these things. They actually happen. It's things like getting a new tube station paid for, uh, completely without any recourse to the pub public uh, finances. It's the thousands of homes who are getting built, right the way across. And it's coming back and reviewing the schemes after they're built to make sure that it turns out the developers' costs and therefore uh, are less than expected, that their profit is greater, that we claw that money back. And that has meant tens of millions of pounds clawed back from Nine Elms to be spent on affordable housing elsewhere. Once again, we deliver. Second supplementary. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, Wandsworth uh, has a very good record of building uh, and planning permission for homes uh, costing over £1 million. Pounds. Uh, yeah, most of the flats that you're building are luxury ghost flats, as The Guardian recently uh, reported on. Stephen Hurd, the founder and chief question. of My Home London Scamming, recently described Nine Elms as the wrong properties that London so don't need. Question. Can the cabinet member please tell me how many council homes the council have built in the last 15 years, and whether he can honestly tell me whether ones of residents on the average wave, on the, on the average wage, walking along the riverside, will be looking up and thinking these homes are for them? <laughs> well, as for council houses, we've built about 300. That is more than any other council in London of whatever political persuasion. Once again, this council, through its innovative hidden homes development that Councillor Johnson led for so long, actually has delivered something. And as for the, uh, the people walking along the line, oh yes, in fact, because 100% of the affordable housing in the River Light scheme has gone to local residents. So these provisions are there. It's about time the opposition stopped carping and coming up with ridiculous stories about empty flats when in fact if you look at the figures and then it shows there are very few of these properties indeed there's a report coming out very sh shortly that will, sh will show that but it's not just me who says, says it all it's the Labour Mayor who says our record is terrific so the question is does the Labour group over there agree with their own Mayor or, or do, they, do they think that he's wrong again we are delivering and all the Labour Party can do is to talk about it yeah. Sorry, fantastic is the word. Question. Uh, question 17 to the Cabinet Member for Housing. Uh, thank you, Councillor Carpenter. Um, the Council has committed to spend from a variety of sources up to £150 million to support housing development and delivery. Um, this is the just over 1,000 homes, 60% of which will be affordable. Um, you're also aware that retention of the higher level of right to buy receipts was a key factor in accelerating this development <coughs> programme and the expenditure detail is detailed in the table on the, on the question, on, on, in the written answer, sorry. Um, 
In relation to development and acquisitions, we now are utilising the right to buy one for one receipts and HOA balances to deliver and refurbish um, homes for um, people. We've got 271 in the pipeline um, and then again there's the numbers again are in the written answer. I won't read them all out to you. Uh, can I thank you for the extremely uh, comprehensive uh, answer to your question, uh, which you only need to extend the table in my previous question for. Uh, but I understand the reason for it. The fact of the matter is that we've sold off 374 houses, but only replaced 36 of them. And we're actually spending 25 million more than we received in order to do the ones that are in, in progress. So my question is really, you know, are we delivering on the one for one replacement which we're required to do. It seems that we have not so far. Um, you can, I mean, we are delivering, we are delivering more homes than anyone you know, else in London has for, in terms of council housing. The three, this 300, we're delivering a thousand homes. We're, we're using our spend um, in order to bring forward these developments. So no, it's not one for one at the moment, um, but we, we continue to build and deliver. Is there a request for a second supplementary? If not, that brings to... Supplementary. Um, <laughs> <laughs> see, see that seeing that some up. people here seem to wish to indulge in ancient history, and possibly uh, the uh, chair doesn't know the history, but would she take my word for it, the 300 council homes is about the achievement of the, lab the last Labour Council and this authority for about every four months, just about 300, and was well a thousand a year, something like that, for, for five, six years. That's the difference. Well, I, mean, I know it's indulging in the past, but you can't say I'm the first one to do that. <laughs> Uh, yes, <laughs> yes. I'm, a, I'm afraid I can't comment on the previous Labour administration's um, house building record, sadly. Um. <laughs> okay, uh, that brings to an end uh, Cabinet members' questions.